Welcome, everybody, to Hello. this panel on Lorwen and education. So I'm joined by Remco, Remco Al, and, uh, and Mark. Uh, should we start with some introductions, maybe? Yeah. Mark, why don't you go ahead? Sure. Uh, hi, I'm Mark Stanley. Uh, I run a small business uh, called Thingitude in the UK. And uh, I guess my involvement <coughs> with uh, education has been around uh, teaching uh, Laura Wan and the principles of IoT to uh, primary school, uh, secondary school, and at uh, university. Um, is that enough of an introduction? <laughs> Uh, I'm Al from Sensational Systems. Uh, we are primarily distributors of uh, IoT hardware and devices and a lot of LoRaWAN. Uh, we're based in Edinburgh in the UK and also now in the Netherlands. Uh, and we work quite closely with the University of Edinburgh and they have many, many projects in, uh, in education. So uh, that's, it's been an interesting world to get into. All right, I'm Remco. I'm uh, the chairman of IoT Apeldoorn. Uh, that is the association that for, came out of the TTN Apeldoorn community. And uh, I'm uh, teaching still at the University of Applied Sciences, uh, Han, where I'm working with a program of embedded systems engineering. And I've got 30 years of experience in telecommunication. Sounds good. Welcome, everybody. <laughs> uh, I'm Ben Oleenka, and I do technical content for the Things Industries. So that means a lot of writing about how to use LoRaWAN products and then also trying to create awareness about LoRaWAN as a solution. So the first question is, how do you see LoRaWAN being used in education? Mark? So uh, my involvement has been uh, really, so most of my customers are a local government in the UK and um, they are keen to engage with local communities, particularly around things like LoRaWAN. And in the UK, um, the teaching of technology is probably not as it should be in the schools, so they, they often look for outside support. Uh, so in South Wales, I have been working with Carmarthenshire Council, uh, doing a really fun uh, two, two session uh, run through of IoT with nine-year-olds. Um, so this is uh, originally teaching them about sensors and radio and then deploying a load of sensors in the school and then coming back six weeks later and doing a session all on the data that we have gathered from that and talking about things like data security and stuff like that. Um, I've been doing workshops with uh, secondary education uh, in a technical, uh, technical college um, and I hire uh, students as well, so uh, sort of 17, 18 year old students, I will hire them for projects over the summer so they get some real work experience. Um, and then I guess the third bit would be uh, working with universities. So we developed a personal safety solution for Reading University, developed with students at the university um, that has since been taken on and it's, it's now a safety application for the whole town of Reading. Uh, so anyone who lives there uh, can make use of that. Um, yeah, I think that's, that should cover it. Uh, so yeah, uh, as I say, I've been working with the University of Edinburgh quite a lot. They, uh, they had some funding, um, uh, so they have a reasonable amount of money to, to spend in IoT devices and, and solutions. Uh, and it's got to be focused in uh, our area of the country, which is uh, the southeast of Scotland. So this money is to be spent in benefiting the people and the environment and all these kind of things. Uh, so one of the things they really wanted to focus on is uh, education, more about data than about the technology itself. So they see that you know, there's a real gap in education in the UK, uh, especially when it comes to data. And you know, the next generation is going to have to be able to analyze data and understand it better and more automatically. And really, that's just not being taught very well. So their, their project is to put CO2 sensors, LoRaWAN CO2 sensors, and gateways into every school in the region, which is 550 schools. Uh, we've deployed about half now. Um, and they've built a, an educational program around those that they are delivering through the teachers. So they're educating the educators how to teach these kids uh, about data science. Uh, and they're, 
the kids in the schools have now got real-world data to, to look at. So they move the sensors around and they see what happens. They leave them in their rooms and they see this, the levels go up. They open the windows, they see them come down. Um, so in this case, the LoRaWAN is, uh, is an interesting component of it, but it's not the key thing. It is the more about the data and understanding what it means and like getting the, the, the reasons and the, the understanding there. So that's the, the key thing there. And our, our part of this project has been helping with the delivery of it. So obviously, there's a lot of gateways to get out, there's a lot of sensors to get out, and configuring all this stuff, and getting it all delivered to all these different schools, and dealing with all these different uh, education authorities. So it's a big sort of logistical thing. Um, but we went into one of the schools, and it was really fun. Like they, they had some kids that were uh, last year of primary school, which I think is what, 10 or 11, yeah. that sort of age. Uh, and they had, you know, there was these four girls that had been first to, to really test this stuff out. And they were so keen and so interested. And they were like, this is really cool. And then we brought in some other sensors for them to look at. And they're like, all oh, right, what does this one do? Uh, what does this one do? What does this one do? And they just wanted to know everything. They like, were just soaking it up. So that was really cool. So they're now looking at expanding this project and seeing what else they can put out, like weather stations. And you know, so they could detect rainfall and you know, particulates in the air and all that. And they can find out more about their environment. So it's, uh, yeah, it's been really interesting. Yeah, well, um, I'm using LoRaWAN in my program, in my, uh, my classes, and uh, for me uh, in the classes, LoRaWAN is a vehicle. Uh, I mean, LoRaWAN, as we all know, is not fit for all purposes. Hmm. As for every, every purpose, there's a different protocol or whatsoever that you need to apply. And LoRaWAN is a vehicle for me to teach my students in seven weeks the magic that comes with uh, uh, designing IoT devices, designing IoT solutions in there. Because uh, engineering an IoT solution is a five-dimensional chess, play a chess that you've got. On one hand, you've got power, low power budget from the battery, low power, you've got coverage, you've got data rate, you've got latency, uh, you've got uh, 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 whatever the data comes through, yes or no. Mm. All kind of things that if you design a IoT solution, and that's what I'm teaching my students, uh, LoRaWAN is capable of offering you that. And the fun thing about LoRaWAN is that, I mean, it's a modern standard, it's a relative recent standard, although 2016, 2017 is still re re uh, recent. It's secure by design, it's uh, uh, with low power in mind. Um, and what's very nice about LoRaWAN standard in my courses is that it's a standard that is only this thick. Hmm. You can read it in an evening, mm -hmm. not necessarily. It's not a fun evening, is it? But well, <laughs> you sleep very well afterwards. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But you can read it in an evening, and then you don't understand everything, but you can start with it. If mm. you go for a modern standard, else uh, like narrowband or LTE mm. Kadem or whatever, I don't know whether the stack of paper fits here from the, from the floor up to the ceiling. And I can deal with that in seven weeks. Mm, yeah. So Laura One is for me a vehicle that I use to have use cases. They come up with a use case, and they have to implement it, and they have to think also the, uh, mm. about it. Whether Laura One is the right technology of choice, mm. and of course I've decided we use Laura One. You get <laughs> an indoor gateway for me. You get a nice device to, to to prototype on. But you may challenge me in my class and say, "Okay, you've chosen Laura One. You should have chosen narrowband." And then I say, "Good idea." Why? Come up with the reasoning. And therefore, LoRaWAN for me is a vehicle to be able to teach my students and make them the new engineers that will contribute to all the sensors and all the networks that we're going to deploy and applications with, for example, what we see here on this, uh, on yeah. this uh, fair. It is an amazing, uh, like the end-to-end the, the -end bit of LoRaWAN, you can just about get your whole arms around and you can develop a device, you know, a, an end device on a sensor. You can uh, get it configured to a network server. You can understand the radio side of things. You can get the data out of the other end and onto the internet. And there aren't many strands of technology where you can actually understand the whole end-to-end -end piece it, relatively quickly. Yep. You know, so as as a student, it's something you can pick up and and really feel like you've you've got. Got, got, got literally a good literally mm. every piece that is in the chain from the from the node from the sensor up to the presentation in there, you find it everywhere in every other technology in every use case. Again, maybe a bit a bit differently implemented, but the foundation is the same everywhere. Yeah. it's just a chain, and that's the nice thing about LoRaWAN. Yeah. 
yeah. and can run it all yourself. You can do every part yourself. You're not relying you on an operator. Or, and it's what also is very nice is, and that's also very important in modern education, depending on the need, the interest of the student, you can divert within the range of lower one. Okay, he's more in, interested in low power, then you dig into low power. Oh, he's like, uh, want to know about the back end, then oh, here's TTS, here's ChirpSec, whatever. Uh, you've got a server implemented do it yourself and come up with the results. Hmm. And then all these individual initiatives, they're all brought together into the same project, which works in the end. Yeah. That sounds like a really interesting variety of examples there. Yeah. Do, do you actually get your students to read the lower end standard? Yeah. <laughs> and what fun is, I mean, I start with a presentation on lower one, and then there are a couple of videos which unfortunately are V2 videos. Then I always have to translate, yeah, okay, you're <laughs> further than that one, but nevertheless. And then after three weeks, they all get a challenge. Do things foundation training and the exam on here. And 75% of them really take the exam and get the badge. And that's also uh, quite interesting because then they have also a, the element of competition in there. So, yes, they go in there, and I have weekly, I have questions, I challenge them, and I come up with, I confront them in, in their engineering decisions with, okay, the standard says this, how do you address that? And then we've got a very interesting discussion with you guys. <laughs> I, I wrote some of those questions, and I haven't read the Lorwen <laughs> standard in, in its entirety, I don't think. But <laughs> yeah. Um, you got some homework now then, Ben. <laughs> yeah, yeah. But that's tonight. I mean, if you, if you have trouble sleeping, read the whole thing. Uh, the, on, the, on the train, maybe. Yeah, yeah. sure is a disadvantage about the lower one standards. I mean, you can still sleep in it when you put it on your pillow. It's <laughs> heavy on your head when you start sleeping. But. Okay, good. Um, I think that you guys touched on this a little bit, but uh, but why do you think it's important to uh, to use LoRaWAN or maybe even other other types of IoT in education? I uh, one thing that you said Al, made me immediately think about the gender gap in STEM. Mm. Um, you know, you, you you mentioned that that you have a group of girls who are really excited about the sensors yeah. that came, and um, yeah, so maybe yeah, you can so elaborate I mean, that, that was a funny one. So they, this was one of the the first schools that they deployed this in as a, like a test case, and um, so we went over to see them and kind of chat about it, and I did a little talk about, you know, my bit of the world and stuff. Um, but they, uh, apparently, they, they kind of asked the class to, to put their hands up if they were interested in, in joining and doing this stuff first. And it was these uh, four girls that just went, they went straight into it, you know. So, uh, and they just really ran with it. So now, it, now and what was really interesting is these girls who are you know, like 10 or 11, and now dragging in all of their classmates and like, you know, look, this is cool. And then everybody else is looking over their shoulders going, oh yeah, they're doing, that's great, that's <laughs> interesting. You know, that's better than just stuff on a whiteboard. So that really works. So they've like added, a, you know, they've become, you know, cheerleaders for the whole thing and like getting people involved. And, and so that's been really good. But the, uh, yeah, rolling it out across all the schools, obviously you've got, a nominal 50-50 mix of, of genders in schools. So, right, uh, you've got all those kids there. You've got a captive audience to talk to. So every, you know, every kid of that age in, uh, in, in our region of Scotland is going to be learning about this stuff. So it's not that, you know, it's not going to be a divided thing. You're all going to get a, a look at it, all going to get a chance to play with it, and that's how it should be. So whether, hopefully, you know, as a, as a father of a daughter, you know, I'm kind of <laughs> hoping that this uh, gender gap will close and... We'll see how it goes, but I think this is a really good start. That's, uh, yeah. I think what very, uh, very important is about Laura One is that it is so accessible, and with that, um, you have more uh, youngsters, uh, kids coming in, uh, being able to start with it, and they have a rapidly, very rapidly, they have the experience of success. And when the experience of success is there, then the fun comes in, and all these things facilitate in the learning. And I think Laura One as a protocol, if you see it as not as a means, but as, as, as something that you can use in you what you want to obtain, then that is very much supportive on that one. Mm -hmm. I suppose that you were saying that, you know, obviously you can, and both, you can do the, the whole piece. Like you can, you can do the whole thing from end to end, but you can also quite easily skip large sections of it. So you can hide the difficult bits and say, okay, uh, so here's your sensor. Let's not worry about the network server bit. That just works. And let's say, and here's you know some dashboards. Uh, so you can start with a nice overview and work down. When I did an engineering degree, my lecturer called it a process of diminishing deception. Yeah. Then first year, everything's cool, everything's easy. Look at this shiny stuff. And then in next year, it's like, 
Remember I said that was easy. Well, actually, peel back a layer, <laughs> and then by the end of the time, you wanted to kill yourself because you're now down at the atoms, you know. But, yeah, you, but, you, you simply level up. In, yeah, yeah. But it's a way you can start at the top and yeah. like work your way down quite ni kind of nicely, can't yeah. you? Yeah. Yeah, I, I, hired, uh, I hired Tracy, um, who had just finished her A-levels. Uh, she hadn't done as well as she wanted, so she was going to resit them so that she could go to university. So she came to work for me for a year. Um, she came up with the idea for the personal safety app, and uh, we pitched that to the council together. And uh, she got £100,000 worth of funding, which, as someone who is well, she 19 at the time, that's, that's a real sort of endorsement for your idea. <laughs> and that's just, you know, just through learning a bit about Laura One and what potential it had, and then going on to actually deliver it um, was, you know, it's been a, a real growth for her. She went back, absolutely aced the A-level, she's done a degree, master's, she's doing a PhD now, still involved in technology, which, you know, as you said at the beginning, the, the gender gap is, yeah. is a real problem. And this is one way or one example of someone who's, who's beaten that and, and really doing well in it. So, yeah, That's think, a really inspiring story. Yeah. Uh, I think with Lolo Wan and IoT, you're able to plant a seed in these youngsters where they are sensible or sensitive to technology and they, this, this, this piece of interest is growing in there. And at some moment, it can take short or long time, it blossoms and then they are capable of, of doing some really nice things, much nicer things than we, do, we have done so far with IoT, with yeah. LoRaWAN, for example. Yeah. What's, what would you say is unique about using LoRaWAN in education? The diversity. Hmm. I think for, for us, it's the variety of things you can do with it, the different applications, different sensors. I mean, so many different sensors that, you know, we're not, we're not teaching the protocol, but we're teaching, you know, how to use yeah. these things. And it's like, okay, so you can, you can get, you know, weather stations, pest control, you know, you can have the environmental things being monitored, you can do soil sensors, you know, all sorts of stuff. Uh, and we, I guess we do quite a lot in um, higher level education as well and research. So when you go up the, up the stack, you know, you've got a lot of, research going on and there's people here doing all these kind of things research projects and they want a, a, a sensor for this and a sensor for that and like well Laura Wan does all of this stuff now so you can always find the right devices for them um, and then that enables their research to, to happen that much more easily so yeah, the, vari the variety of use cases uh, allows you to make them wonder mm. I mean they come up with a sensor with a with a um, with an ultrasound height meter, and then they go, okay, what do I use this for? And then you come up within the context of global warming or, uh, the, for example, uh, the flood network, which is in UK, yep. where you have there a actual purpose of flooding, and you, then you translate it to what happened in Roumont a couple of years ago in the Netherlands, and you look at what's happening currently in, uh, in yeah. Eastern Europe mm -hmm. with the raining, then you get context to it, and that's all possible with the use of LoRaWAN and, uh, and the variety, the diversity of that one. And it sort of works the other way around as well, where they can come to you and say, we want to measure this. Yeah. And you go, ah, yeah, I have a thing for that. And it's not necessarily the thing you thought of, but we, we, we know how to do that. So we can always find something. Yeah, so. true. I mean, we had a reverse geocache project in there where they had to do all kinds of things. And there was one guy that came up, yeah, I wanted to do some communication with the box. Well, okay, consider, okay. <laughs> consider Laura One. Mm -hmm. And there are some limitations, which in, he ran in rapidly into, <laughs> and he had to address it. So he had very much a learning experience on that one. Yeah, yeah. it's all possible. I think um, the... There's something great if you've got Laura One in a town as well, because you can mm. take the stuff outside of the school system. I mean, um, Marco's project with the junior IoT challenges is absolutely fantastic. And if, if you haven't seen it, he's well worth going to talk to. But this idea that you, know, you can start with something in school and you can think about how you might apply it to your own home or <coughs> your garden or people, like kids love the idea of being able to see where their pet cat is gone in the garden, and that's 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 something you can actually realise. Um, you know, they they can do that, and I th I think that that means that it, it they're thinking about it more than just in the in the lesson time. Mm. So. Al, you also mentioned that you can conceal part, complicated parts of the system and then make, later make them, them simple. Mm. And I think LoRaWAN is, is interesting in that you can, you can run a gateway 
and explain how to set that up and what it does. And then you can go outside and use a, a gateway that's managed by somebody else. So you have both of these aspects where you're plugging into a system that is bigger than you, but then also mm. you're able to relatively quickly set that up and un understand it. Yeah, mm. and there's so many resources online as well for learning. So, mm. you know, kids are brilliant at finding the, the how-to videos and just... They're better researchers on the web than we are. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah. yeah. But we also like the, the TTI videos. Like, you, you make some nice videos that, that, you know, make things easy and understandable. Uh, but we like Johan's video, which is, uh, like, was it Laura Wan in, in an hour or 30 minutes or something crazy? And um, basically, it goes from end to end. And whenever we've got a new person that we're saying, right, here's a video, covers everything. It's hard work, right? Sit down, have a cup of coffee, <laughs> yeah. and it starts out really easy. It's like, so you've got gateways and devices, and it's like, bang, spreading factors, bang, ADR, like it gets all, all the detail. But you can, yeah, the whole thing can be done in an hour, and yeah. if you sit and concentrate, you can, like, yeah, you pick up an awful lot. So when we have uh, new people starting, like saying, you know, we can, uh, we can onboard them quite quickly into the LoRaWAN world with a few of these videos uh, and get them going, and they understand a whole lot of it. So. Yeah. I, I remember watching that the first time, and not really understanding anything. <laughs> yeah, you have to watch a few times. You have to watch a few yeah. times and then use stuff. It has you know? to, so like it has each to time, in it. Yeah, yeah. It, yeah and, and just the, it's the, like the hands-on aspect that mm. then makes those things that are actually already in your brain like sit, mm. I think. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Um, wh wh where do you see the future of LoRaWAN in education or in, uh, in IoT in education, in STEM in education? Well, I, I, I see the future in as much as um, Birmingham City University, Dr. Ad Adela Niebuhr, um, he was here in, I think, 2017, 2018, and then started teaching Laura Wan uh, in his bachelor degree um, with students back then. I'm now working with uh, people who've been through that program, now at, at, at research level, uh, still at the university, putting projects together um, that actually involve sort of exp using LoRaWAN to do other, other research. And I think that's really exciting. And, and I guess at the, at the, at the much younger end, um, in Wales, again, I was, uh, one of the schools was in a town and the kids there had done this um, a couple of weeks earlier. They'd been running businesses, like virtual businesses at school. And they were really interested in how you could apply law, like when we'd been through the, the, the workshops I was doing with them, how you could apply that to their business and manage. They were talking about, you know, footfall going in and out the shops. Could you tell this? And this is a nine-year-old kid. <laughs> and I think that's brilliant. And then I was at another school, which is um, much more rural. So all the kids come from farming backgrounds. And their ability to decrypt uh, encoded messages so I would write something up in encoded on the board. And by the time I'd finished writing, they would be there going, I know what that is. And uh, I, th I think it's very exciting. You know, if, if we can get this, these skills into people young enough and the interest and enthusiasm mm. that comes with it, then hopefully that carries through. Yeah, I think for me, the, the scale now, now that we are seeing you know, a much bigger rollout of stuff. Like, so we're finally, with this Edinburgh Uni project, we're rolling out to all of the schools. It's taken a long time to get uh, all the councils and education authorities to actually agree to, to get these devices uh, into their schools, which we now have you know, much more agreement. So this project is going faster, getting them out there. So we'll be covering you know, thousands and thousands of, of kids, which is really great. Uh, but also, you've got now much bigger deployments of sensors like uh, environmental sensors, which means you've got much more data to work with. So now there's a whole other bunch of research and, and other education avenues that open up just based on the data that's being captured at much bigger scale. Yeah. And I think that's really interesting from a, you know, teaching kids about data and, and how to use that. That's I, really I, when we deployed the sensors in the primary school, I thought maybe this is an in with the facilities side of things on the school. Mm. But it, it was actually the teachers who were worried that I was going to take it away at the end because they were using the temperature and humidity data and the particulates outside with the cars, uh, using that in their other lessons so that they could get the kids to plot charts and, and that kind of thing. I think, I think that's, you're, you're absolutely right. These new data streams are going to, mm. going to provide a lot of, a think, lot of raw think, material. I think Laura One, we can all say Laura One is here to stay. I mean, a couple of years or so, we were in doubt, but now we know for sure LoRaWAN is here to say. And I think 
with the changes that we see in society and in climate and everything, to, and all the abilities that we've got, machine learning, uh, machine learning really grew. Uh, the vehicle, the train is still there. The only thing is that at some point we are going to do some th uh, things differently. Uh, before we talked about edge computing, now it's called machine learning, which we still move to the edge. Yeah. Uh, and we're going to do these things more and more practically. So we're still going to work with LoRaWAN with this chain of information in there. And we're going to enhance parts in that and uh, study more on that and find new opportunities on that one. On, on this chain, uh, like AI, like uh, displaying, like uh, addressing uh, big issues or big challenges that we've got in these in these societies, in our mm. societies. Mm. So yeah, I think uh, we'll, it's only enabling us to grow further on that one. That's the way mm. I will look at it. I saw a presentation from Edge Impulse mm -hmm. about using AI to generate data sets that you don't have to actually do any work to collect. Um, and I thought that was interesting. So maybe kids will learn uh, to, to analyze data using data that they've actually collected mm -hmm. and then scale that using data sets that are generated or data sets that are, you know, it, it, it gives them a, a perspective of what the data means and then an ability to understand it on a much bigger scale later as well too, which would be really interesting. Mm. I hope we don't lose kids with clipboards though just doing little tallies. Counting cars and... Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah, yeah. yeah, yeah. yeah. I, I imagine everyone's done that nowadays at some point. He, Nowadays you use sensor networks. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. yeah, you can automate that. Smart, smart sensor networks. Smart, yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, my, my last question is, what is your most inspirational story from having used LoRaWAN in education? The fact that a student comes to me, sir, or, well, it was an Asian student, professor, um, <laughs> I was in your classes, and now I'm in a project. I'm doing these, 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 and these things on that one. It's the best reward you could get. Mm. They come up. You've planted the seed. They carry it along with them, and at some moment, it comes out of the basket. And hey, I'm going to use this. I've got a purpose for that, and then you're successful. That's the feeling that I get. I think with the uh, those those girls in the Roslyn Primary School, when I when one of them was just fascinated, wanting to know what every sensor did, and I said, "This does this," and, and then I turned around and she. She was taking the sensor and, and talking to another another classmate, saying, "This is a sensor, and it does this, this, and this." I'm like, "Oh, okay, cool. Yeah, yeah, yeah. All right, okay. You picked it up. Yeah, yeah. That's fine." <laughs> <laughs> oh, yeah. Uh, so some of the students I've worked with will be listening to this, so I'm uh -oh. I'm, I'm not going to pick a favourite, but I would say I, so. I've I've hired uh, 16 students now, and for me, the inspirational bit is seeing what they become, because I'm only ever going to give them their first first job in, in IT before they go on to something else. But when they go on, they are that much more work ready and uh, sort of better equipped to, to join in the tech world. And seeing what they become is, is fantastic. It's very rewarding. You can give a few examples. Sorry? You can give a few examples. Uh, well, I've, I've talked about Tracy. Um, so uh, yeah, going from uh, not, not doing too well at her A-levels and really being quite anti the education and the technology thing to now be doing a, a degree that goes across two countries and she's working with uh, driverless vehicles and the, the idea of um, how you can use sensors and the environment to make passengers feel more comfortable in, in cars without drivers. I, I think I'm going to be grateful for whatever she, whatever she produces. <laughs> um, but there are... Uh, well, I've got um, a guy who uh, he worked with me for a few a few weeks over the summer. I don't think I had very much to do with this at all. He spent the whole time arguing with me about what programming language we should use, um, and uh, then um, he he did a great job. We were doing a, a digital playground uh, for uh, for an agricultural college in in Northwest Wales. And uh, he helped write that, and he was absolutely brilliant. But he went on, he decided not to go to university. He got a job with a startup in London. It's probably worth more than all of us now. So <laughs> that's, uh, that, was, that was good. Um, and then there are others who uh, went from me to uh, Cisco and have been getting promoted through there. Another guy who's become a real data whiz. Um, most of them go to university and, uh, and then, then into technology. So, yeah, it's been, been very good. It sounds really special. What, what programming language was he fighting for? <laughs> what was he, the right answer? Right, so I was, 
uh, let's say, at the time. So on that project, it was uh, Node.js and JavaScript, and he was strongly advocating Rust. So he, he was way ahead of his time <laughs> yeah. um, and, uh, and into functional programming. And that was the com he went to work for a company that was using Rust. And uh, yeah, I don't think he ever looked back. So <laughs> he might have been right. <laughs> Any other closing words? No. Thank you for having us. Thanks so much. Yeah. Thank you, Remco. Thank you, Al. Thank you Thank for you sharing Mark. the passion Thank that you. we have in education. Yeah. Good, so to have fun to be here. Here. Good to have soulmates here on this <laughs> table, on this, uh, on this discussion. This is also the last, um, the last session on this stage, so we can say goodbye to everybody. Bye. Thank you. <laughs>